Well, this is when um, you know you just left in their hands, Grant. All the work that you've done now and all the preparation that you've done over the last couple of days is just left to them. Now. It was a reshape on the side. Tony Pulis had that luxury to make team decisions. He had the options to create a game plan. That had been done, and now he had to sit by the side of the action to see if he had made the right decisions. Championship chasing Stockport, sure enough, looked to the long high ball to earn them the three points to close the gap on the top two. Yes, yes. Drop him in because he'll get him behind you otherwise. The Cherries' defence stood firm. They pushed the Stockport tall front line as far up the field as they could. Time. Indeed, it was Bournemouth, despite losing at York in their previous outing and despite losing influential midfielder Joe Parkinson to Everton just 48 hours earlier, who oozed confidence and self-belief. Justin, in the air! And one minute before the break, Bournemouth took the lead. Steve Cottrell netting his 14th goal of the season. We would have made it a better goal than what it actually was, really. Um, I think we, we had a little bit of play on the left-hand side. Uh, it got fed out to Justin Skinner, and it, we've put a great crossing far post. Burns has got there, he's headed a great ball back. It was just like a, a simple volley, really, to be honest, but uh, just obviously pleased for it to go in. Struggling a little bit with my hamstring today, but sometimes when you play, when you've, you think you're struggling, sometimes you get your rewards, and hopefully I'd like to think that was my reward for playing today. was a deserved lead, but an important one. It backed the confidence the players had shown in the first half, and as the whistle went, you could feel the self-belief from the players as they returned to the changing room, ready for Tony Pulis's half-time team talk. But that's only 45 minutes. If we have a slow start, lads, and let them into it, it's going to be ever so difficult. So make sure you're frightened. Look at this away, lads. There were no celebrations in that Bournemouth dressing room at half-time. The job was only half done. Not even a word of congratulations to the goal scorer, Steve Cottrell. Just reassurance that the tactics were right, to keep believing in what they were doing. Hey, listen, like I say, lads, it's the bits and pieces. It's a bright start, the bits and pieces. Don't come on, chase come on. the one man. It's the other people around here. Don't chase that one man. Go on in, man. Let's come take a Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Once again, the players were being motivated as they returned to the Edgeley Park pitch, ready for the second half. Once again, Tony Pulis followed his team out to take his position on the away bench. Lysman, you can see that. All sports see managers shouting from the team bench. All sports see the referees verbally criticised. Instructions to players from the bench are now allowed. And throughout the 90 minutes, Tony Pulis was issuing encouragement from the touchline. Daisy, get wide! Daisy, get wide! Reminding players where they were meant to be. Ben, stay in goals, Ben! Ben! Who they should be marking. <laughs> How to play the ball. Time, Roos. And again, Roos is on. Go on, Matt. Who to pass the ball to. Go on, son, by yourself. The instructions themselves may not be necessary, of course. The reminder that people care about what you're doing surely is. Keep it. Help him. That, that's it. And no Bournemouth player was allowed to forget that the small band of travelling supporters, as well as those listening at home, all cared about the results. That's it! Slip the ball back! At Edgeley Park on this particular Saturday afternoon, the confidence was sky high, and justifiably, Bournemouth scored a second goal seven minutes from time. Chris Burns' long-range shot, finding a way over the head of Stockport keeper Ian Ironside. I've got off Kev Russell and I've just seen nobody with me. I was in two minds whether to keep running and have a go from about like 15 yards. So I thought, well, no, it's on my right foot. This could go anywhere. It might go it might hit the corner flag, but I've hit it. And uh, it took a long time when the goalie's actually got his hands to it. It took a hell of a long time to go over that line. It was, it, it was just nice to uh, see it go in, yeah. A thoroughly 
deserved 2-0 victory at a Stockport side lying third in the table for Bournemouth. Well, that's very, very well. Very pleased. Tony Pulis attempted to hold in the emotions. It was just one result in a season 46 games long. But as he returned to the dressing room, he may just have thought it was the most important. He thanked opposite number Danny Begara. He then entered the dressing room to thank his players. Okay, well done, Clark. Well done, Warren. Well done. Just two days after being yet again forced to sell one of his best players, he had had the opportunity to pick from a squad of players. He moulded a game plan and the players produced a tremendous result. Hey, listen, lads, we've played, hey, just two minutes, we've played ever so well today, lads. We've got Huddersfield Tuesday, let's carry it on. Let's not drop again, let's carry it on. They've done different class. Not only on the ball where we've killed, I think we've slaughtered them on the ball, but your work rate and your bits and pieces, you're so bright, lads, today. All the bits and pieces, different class. Tony Pulis must also have realised, though, that while it proved that his team could secure the promotion he worked so hard to achieve, he needs a bigger squad of players to enable him to produce similar game plans throughout the season. Well, yeah, that's right. Yeah. You do one, but I know it's not a lot, Al, but... Back to your four pdates, five bad and one good in. The players wound down. The team bath wasn't blessed with a celebratory song, but the feeling of a job well done was quite rightly blatantly apparent. Before the party was to leave Edgeley Park, Bournemouth manager Tony Pulis found the Stockport boss, Danny Begara. Cheers, Dan. Good luck to you, Tony. Yeah. Well, we needed to, we needed to win Dan today. I know. Well, we needed we need a couple of results. Goal scorer Chris Burns faced the media in general and Derek McGregor in particular. I mean, the goal itself. I mean, no, she's a bit of a bit of fortune in it. Uh, oh yeah, you know. It was a great strike, though, wasn't it? Yeah, it was really not only really good for me, it's really bad for all the two looks. There's no one with me. And I've hit it and the goalie's made a bit of a rack of it, really. McGregor follows the cherries for the Bournemouth Evening Echo. He and manager Tony Pulis, though, have had a long-standing disagreement about his coverage of the club. It's a disagreement that has resulted in Tony not normally talking to Derek during the week. After matches, though, is another matter. You got that impression they were out there? I, I, yeah, I think they were out there. They made sure that they did their jobs. And I think yeah, after the game, you know, there was a, a few bags back. <laughs> so that will um, do me. You know, they, they are the backbone of the team. Tony Pulis paying tribute to his defence. McGregor described it as a brick wall through which Stockport rarely passed in his review of the game the following Monday. Um, Having yeah, met the press, which each manager up and down the country is obliged to do after each game, Tony Pulis then had time to talk talk to some of the travelling supporters, including two famous ladies, Lucille Bartlett and Gwen Shepherd, who follow the team around the country with their dog, Danny. So what do they think of the Bournemouth manager? He's great. We've always liked him because we've known him for a long time, a good many years now. And I think he's super. I think he's doing his best for the club. He's, he's not had a lot of luck for bugger. He's had to sell everything that... that that we get, but I'm, I mean, they've done well today, they played well today. He's making the best of a bad job, he's got to. He hasn't got a big squad, he can only put out the players he's got, and it's down to them, it's not down to him, he can't do nothing on the bench. I mean, he gets out there and he gets booked himself, so. <laughs> or sent off. What do you think of the manager? He's a nice fellow. He's a supporter's player, but when you get to know him, he's a nice person. He's I think he's doing his best for the club as he, see, as he sees it, and that's his job. Do you think the criticism he's been receiving is fair? Not really. I don't think he's been given the chance. He started off as a manager with a rotten dust around his neck, and he's paying for it all the way along. Hello, girls. Hello, Tony. <laughs> I see Grant's been talking to you then. Yes. Did you yeah, give me some steak? Yes. yes. <laughs> Good. Yes, that's what I said. You can't no. play yourself because you get sent off or booked. I told you that. <laughs> no, that's not me. No. I was a touch player. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> They've got to say that, Grant. Yes, yes. They've got to say yeah. that. Yeah. Those things. Player. How long does it take you to come up? By half past five, the Bournemouth team were back on the coach, ready for the five-hour trip back to Dean Course. Manager Tony Pulis, having driven up to Tranmere on the previous night, set off by himself for Bristol. Yeah, they'll enjoy themselves going back now, Grant. Um, you know, we, we travelled up to York on Tuesday, never played that well, never did ourselves justice, and um, it was a long journey back. We never got back till about quarter to three in the morning. And, you know, it's... There'll be a different atmosphere on the bus today. You know, they've enjoyed it and they deserve to enjoy themselves.